Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18.3 RC has been out for a few days and iOS 18.2.1 has been out for a few weeks, but there's even more to talk about since the iOS 18.3 RC is out. What's new video as far as features, whether or not it's ready and the overall experience, not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll. We're at the time of this video, there's over 13,000 votes and over 200 comments. I've gone through all the comments to determine whether or not it's ready what it's like, and we'll go through some of your comments toward the end of the video, so be sure to stick around. Now, iOS 18 has actually been out since September, and this week Apple released how many people have installed it since the update released. According to Apple, 68% of all people have actually installed it. Now, they don't specify which version necessarily, but it's actually been installed as far as that goes. That's a huge amount of people, 68%. I'll link this story in the description below if you want to learn more about it, how many people have installed it, what the overall experience is like. As far as this goes, you'll see 76% of all devices. And when it comes to iPads, it's 53% of all iPads have installed iPadOS 18. So that could be the first version all the way up to iOS 18.2.1. Apple has also finally updated their website to reflect CarPlay 2 not being available in 2024. So they've actually removed the date here, they've acknowledged that it's not ready yet, but they've also said that it's still coming to some manufacturers. They're going to implement this and they're showing different versions, how it can be implemented in different cars, what it has to offer, and the next generation of CarPlay here within a car. Early on, we heard that Porsche and Aston Martin would have it. It was supposed to roll out to many manufacturers who were partners of Apple, but at this point, we still haven't seen it yet. So hopefully we'll see it pretty soon. There's also a new store that opened up the other day in Miami. It's a new Apple store. You'll see Apple Miami World Center and a few different people actually got to go look at it as well in advance. They posted some pictures on X or Twitter and you can see those here. So it looks like a really nice store with some green on the top, sort of a little bit different design than we've seen before and an area where it's not only a genius bar, but you can pick up devices there as well. We've seen this in China at the same time. And there's also some wallpapers here and I'll link those in the description. Now there's some really great news and it looks like they're actually going to fix Siri and iOS. Apple is now bringing a longtime Apple veteran to help work with Apple intelligence and improve Siri. Kim Vorath, who's been there for over 30 years, is known for his meticulous management of software. So this is great news for the overall future of iOS and improvements, maybe not just Siri and Apple intelligence, but hopefully iOS as a whole. I think there's a lot of great features here, but we really need the stability and maybe Apple's seeing that themselves where it's just not what, what it used to be as far as overall stability. So hopefully we see that change pretty soon. Now it may take them some time to get it right, but at least they're looking into it and working on it. Also, I mentioned previously this week that digital ID was announced in the UK, but through an app. I mentioned it before that it would be announced. It's now been announced by the UK government. They've officially announced it, but they haven't mentioned Apple wallet at all. So, so far, if you go into the wallet app and within the wallet app, we just have States here and we don't have a bunch of other countries yet. So hopefully we'll see that implemented in the future. When it comes to new features, well, if you have a device that supports Apple intelligence, iOS 18.3, it seems will automatically enable this within your settings. If you have an iPhone 15 pro 15 pro max or iPhone 16 or an iPad or Mac with an M one or newer you'll have Apple intelligence and it will turn it on automatically. If you're in a supported region, now you can go back and turn this off if you want to, or you can just leave it enabled, but either way, it looks like they're automatically enabling this. Apple actually said specifically for users new or upgrading to iOS 18.3, Apple intelligence will be enabled automatically during iPhone onboarding. Users will have access to Apple intelligence features after setting up their devices. To disable Apple intelligence, users will need to navigate to Apple intelligence and Siri and settings panes to turn off Apple intelligence's toggle. This will disable Apple intelligence features on the device. So that's something that it looks like if you don't want it, you can still turn off, but again, they're enabling it automatically. It also looks like iOS 18.3 RC could contain an update that allows for Apple's hearing test in Belgium. If you have AirPods Pro 2, these are actually AirPods 4, but if you have AirPods Pro 2 and you're in Belgium with the latest update that they have as far as a firmware update they released in beta, it looks like it may enable it in Belgium. So if we go into X, someone actually sent me some photos. You'll see here it showed up as a hearing test and then it actually showed that it was available. So you can see the build 
build of the new firmware version 767B, and that was released earlier this week as well. We'll talk about other releases in a moment, but they did release an AirPods firmware update. And maybe by having that on that device, having iOS 18.3 RC, it triggered that to pop up. And hopefully it's available in more countries. Local governments have to agree that it's allowed as far as a hearing device. So that's why it's taking a while to roll out. While not exactly a new feature, a private account on X has said that the expected updates to iPhone SE 4, iPad Air, and iPad models will launch with the included version of iOS 18.3 and iPadOS 18.3. So it looks like they could be coming very soon with 18.3 installed, so that could be within a few weeks or so. As far as upcoming features, while well, we might see a change here with iOS 18.3 when it releases to the public, we could see Unity Bands with a new wallpaper. So if you go into your wallpaper, typically every year we get Unity wallpapers and they update this section here. We could see that with a new Unity Band for the Apple Watch, but so far we haven't seen that. We typically see it around the 17.3 or 18.3 release time. So we're still waiting for that iOS 18.4 is expected next, and we do expect a new emoji in that version. Apple usually rolls out the latest Unicode standard, again, not created by Apple, but they're just adhering to a standard, and it looks like that could be coming soon. Also, according to 9to5Mac, a future update will actually enhance screen recording. So if you're recording with your screen here, you start recording, what it will allow is for stereo audio. It will also allow for HDR video and picture in picture apparently when using the camera. We don't know the supported devices, but according to nine to five Mac, we should be getting that. We should also be getting options for default maps and translation apps in the EU and also PayPal support and Apple wallet. So I've mentioned a couple of those before. Apple intelligence with iOS 18.4 is supposed to be a large update, not just things such as image playground, but possibly also some major updates to Siri, some other things we may not have expected or just enhancements overall, maybe to visual intelligence and more. So we're waiting to see what that's all about, but I do expect some bigger updates with 18.4 compared to 18.3. Now, as far as the next iPhone, iPhone 17 Air, we keep hearing of an upcoming version that's super thin. A recently leaked photo shows what could be the phone itself. There's been mixed information that the camera bump would sort of change and resemble that of maybe the Google Pixel 9 series. However, some have said that it's not true, but we do know that it's going to be about 5.5 millimeters thin. Prior to this, the iPhone 6 was the thinnest. This is a 6 Plus, but you can see how thin that is compared to even today's phones. So an even thinner design, hopefully with a battery that lasts longer, but with some compromises such as a singular camera and a few changes here and there. But a super thin phone is apparently what Apple's working on to replace the plus size model that they release every year. iOS 19 is hopefully going to get a redesign a little bit. John Prosser mentioned this. I talked about this a little bit before where we should have a redesigned camera app and maybe some other things throughout the OS. Some of those design changes, I'm not sure make hundred percent sense, but we could see some changes throughout the OS to make it a look, look a little bit newer and maybe more along the lines of vision OS, which I think is a really great look with a lot more translucency throughout. As far as releases this week, while well, I already mentioned the AirPods Pro 2 beta firmware, so again, that's version 7E5067B, there's also a Safari technology preview. And if you go to the Safari technology preview page, go to download Safari, you'll see the latest version here of 2.12 that was released on January 23rd. So that's available for macOS Sequoia and macOS Sonoma with all the latest technology and the release notes here. So lots of good changes here, some updates there if you want to check it out. Also, of course, we're expecting a public release of iOS 18.3 very soon. We did not have an iOS 18.3 RC2, so I do expect a new build number, however, maybe with those Unity wallpapers and a few other things, I expect that on Monday the 27th. Now, it could be this week. Typically, Apple does release them on Monday, but that's usually what we see. We also could see the release of iOS 18.4 beta one this week. If Apple keeps with what they've done in the past, we would see that maybe the next couple days after the public release, along with Mac OS updates, watch OS updates and more. So we'll look for that. And of course, iOS 19 will be shown for the first time in June. We're only a few months away and we could see that at WWDC, most likely on June 9th. We don't know the exact date yet, but Apple should let many people know when WWDC is within the next month or two at this point. 
When it comes to the overall experience, well, many people are still sticking with iOS 17.7.2. You can see that in the YouTube community poll, only 4%, but that's out of 13,000. And that's only people who voted here. Many people are still on iOS 18.2.1 and 31% of 13,000 here are actually using iOS 18.3 RC. So I have some good information about that where 17.7.2, many people are on because it's very stable, but of course you're lacking about 400 changes at this point. Apple is going to release an iPad OS 17.7.4, but there's no sign of iOS 17.7.3 or 17.7.4. It's odd that they're just pushing it to iPads at this point iOS 18.2.1 is really a mixed review depending on who you ask. Some people say it's great with great battery life. Others people have actually said that it's pretty terrible. So it really depends who you ask, but many people say it has good battery life. We'll check that in just a moment though. When it comes to iOS 18.2.1 bugs, well, there's quite a few slow keyboards for some, it slows down for others. There's rebooting for others and many other issues with notifications not coming through and some odd things here and there. Now, iOS 18.3 RC has seemed to fix quite a few issues. It fixes the touchscreen bug for me. This has been an issue on even 18.2.1. I think it improved a bit, but the edge touch detection was a little bit buggy. It seems to be greatly improved. I haven't had any issues since I installed this version. Siri has been using a lot of power for some people and you'll see it just triggered there. We'll look at that in battery in just a moment. And only a couple of people have actually said that they've had issues with it. Most people say that it's ready to go and it seems pretty good. The only other thing I've heard is some people with accessories, if they're using USB-C, maybe plugging in a Samsung T7 drive, sometimes it wouldn't recognize until they rebooted their device. So it does seem like it still works. If it's not working for you, reboot and it seems to work. Some people are saying mail notifications are not coming through, but in general, it seems to be fixed, at least for me, but you do need to make sure your notifications are set up properly in your settings and you're not in a focus mode that would shut those off. When it comes to battery life, well, there's no sign of battery intelligence so far. I've kind of given up on it at this point. The basic idea for that would be that it would tell us how much battery is remaining or how much more time is remaining when you're charging. So you would just lock the screen. It would tell you we've seen this on many other phones. We've seen this on MacBooks. There's no reason they can't tell us. I'm not sure why they haven't included it, but it was in code a few versions ago. So maybe we'll see that roll out with the public release, or maybe it'll be a little while when it comes to battery life itself. Well, first let's take a look at iOS 18.2.1 on a device that's been running it for a while. And thanks to Cameron for sending this in. This is on an iPhone 16 pro max with 100% battery capacity on iOS 18.2.1. And you'll see he had, well, used about 50% of his battery and had two hours and 37 minutes of screen active time at 36 minutes of screen idle time. However, prior to this, it actually was much, much better. So it seems to go up and down greatly for some people. When it comes to iOS 18.3 RC, I've been running it full time while traveling with this device and I've been using it heavily on cellular as well. So if we go into battery, battery health, you'll see I have 100% capacity at 112 cycles. You can see additional details with coconut battery here. That's a Mac app that you can download outside the app store. And if we go to the last 10 days yesterday, I had four hours and 32 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 25 minutes of screen idle time and used over 75% of the battery. The day before I used about the same amount, four hours and 14 minutes of screen active time and was less than 75%. It varies greatly depending on what you're doing. And you can see that here where I use this for my hotspot, used it for an Uber home and lock screen and what's actually using my power here. So different things with traveling, some things are using more power than others, but I haven't had any issues with Siri it only used 1%. So it hasn't been incredible battery life, but it actually seems like it's been getting a little bit better if we go back and look at previous versions even. So it looks like it's improved for me, even though it's not phenomenal but I think many people have been saying that it's much better and hopefully when the public release is out, it will improve it greatly for just about everyone out there. When it comes to performance, it's generally pretty smooth, no real issues. However, it doesn't feel like the animations are super fast, but everything is just super smooth in general with ProMotion here in the app library, or just going into different apps, going into things such as music, letting it scroll here. You'll see it works fine. Even on the iPhone 11, no real issues. And in general, it's been pretty good.
When it comes to heat, I've only seen one complaint and I haven't had any whatsoever. I used it as a personal hotspot with this version. I used it to upload videos that you saw throughout the week this past week. I've had no issues with it getting too hot. It stays nice and cool outside of a case in about 70 degree Fahrenheit ambient temperature. Let's go ahead and take a look with the thermal camera though. On the iPhone 16 Pro Max running iOS 18.3 RC, we're at about 32 degrees Celsius. On iOS 18.2.1, again on the same device as 16 Pro Max, we're at about 27.5 degrees Celsius. So it's nice and cool to the touch for the most part, maybe a little bit warmer than I've seen in the past, but I have been holding on to it quite a bit. But in general, it seems to be pretty good. If we look at storage, go to general and then iPhone storage, scroll to the bottom. iOS is taking up 18.27 gigabytes. Apple intelligence is 6.28 gigabytes by itself. So it's at least calculating it properly, but in general, it is taking up a lot of storage. System data again goes up and down as normal. I'm right about nine gigabytes or 8.95 gigabytes. No issue there. It goes up and down all the time. You'll see it just jumped to 13.49. It will go down as needed, sometimes up or down. It's not really anything to worry about. When it comes to overall benchmarks, I did run those on this device and the iPad. You'll see my M4 iPad Pro 13 inch and iPhone 16 Pro Max, both running iOS or iPadOS 18.3 RC. And it scored pretty well on the iPhone 3,470 for single core, 8,630 for multi-core. If we take a look at what we had before, it seems to be performing well within a margin of error and what you would expect. So no real issues there. And the same is true on the iPad as well. If we take a look at the history. So you can see that here. So plenty fast, no issues whatsoever. Now, as far as the overall experience, let's take a look at some of the comments and see what you had to say. Harsh Akura Car 6809 said, I'm on iOS 18.2.1 on iPhone 16 Pro Max. The touch sensitivity of the screen around the edges hasn't improved yet. Not only the edges, but overall touch sensitivity should be improved since I'm missing few letters while tapping. Either I have to tap repeatedly or tap harder. It's so annoying. Dentist KK said, RC feels smoother. Touch issues are gone. Connectivity issues are no longer present and most importantly screen on time has much improved to eight to nine hours on a single charge it's a good update so far running on my 16 pro jonathan mox 2530 said running ios 18.3 rc on my 16 pro and honestly i completely forgot i was even running a beta until i saw this community post so i'd say it's pretty good Slightly annoying bug with first party widgets placed in the top left of the home screen with tinted app icons on. Oddly specific, I know, it makes swiping to that page stutter. I'm not the only one who has had this bug either. I noticed a few people showing the same issue on Reddit. NB31B, no issues with RC on my 16 Pro so far. I'd say it's ready to go. Hatbox Ghost 735 said, 18.3 definitely is better battery performance for all 16 models. 18.2.1 just messed that up somehow. Lil Guy PHX says, no issues to report in RC 18.3 on my 14 Plus that prevents me from using the device as my daily driver. Battery seems to be good, nice and smooth with good responsiveness. iPhone mirroring keeps getting better. When it comes to connectivity, I had a good chance to use this traveling both in an airplane, going across the country to a different event, checking it out, checking out things like Apple Park, and connectivity overall was pretty good. The only time it struggled was when we were in an area with a lot of people using the network at the same time. So in general, no real issues there. I didn't have any issues with Wi-Fi, and I didn't have any issues whatsoever with AirPods. I used them throughout the flights, and they seemed to work just fine. So good news there, it seems to be working as you would want. Anything else, though, I haven't really noticed any bugs whatsoever in this update, so I think it's definitely ready to go, and I'm glad to see not a huge update, but something that seems to fix many of the issues. So that's everything with iOS 18.3 RC. Hopefully we'll see it within a few days, and probably with a new build number as well. Now, if you've noticed anything else or maybe some new features I didn't mention in previous videos or this video, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.